Zeb and I have been painting antique furniture for years, and a lot of times when I ask people how I should paint it, I catch a lot of heat. Surprisingly enough, a lot of people said to do a light pink, so that's exactly what we're going to do today to make this antique go from shabby to chic. We picked this piece up off the side of the road. It was free. It came with another vanity, actually, and Jamie took the drawers out so that they would be saved. The guy was pretty upset that we had taken the drawers, but we ended up getting the piece anyway because we were five minutes away. We came back, and he was like, somebody took the drawers out of these. I'm like, it was us. We were coming back. He's like, you shouldn't have done that. Picking 101. If you don't want somebody to take the piece, but you got to get the right car, you take the drawers and you come back. So that's what we did. By popular demand, we are using Cottage Colors in Vintage Pink. It's the perfect soft pink with a slightly peach undertone. It's really important on pieces like this to scrub them really well. The paint will not stick if your piece is greasy or dirty. Sometimes you may even get a little bit of resist or bleed through. So just make sure it's really, really clean. And then the next step is the first coat should be nice and thin. If you put your paint on too thick, it's going to drip. So easy does it. The first coat won't look good, but the second and third coat will give you much better coverage. You want to go all the same directions with your brush strokes, so usually I just get a coat on there and then I smooth it out. Cottage Color is self-leveling and has a built-in sealer, so you can get a buttery smooth finish even with a brush. One of the things I love about the Cottage Color line is that it's all natural, there's no VOC. We did do some prep, we had to clean it, but it sticks to just about everything we've painted it on so far. You can see we're painting on the back porch of the church. I have a feeling that our church shop situation is going to have many pieces of antique wood furniture painted on the back. Don't freak out when the first coat is done. It's going to be streaky. Just let it dry completely, like all the way completely. If you try to put the second coat on before it's dry or you try to fix a drip, it's going to, I don't know how to put it, but you'll like pick up the paint and it's going to look weird. So if you get any drips, just let it dry because you can sand them out with 220 later. Second coat gave us a little bit better coverage, but we wound up doing three coats in total before we were ready for distressing. I would say more than uh, worrying about your brush strokes, don't overwork the paint. You can easily overwork it because it has that built-in sealer. It does start to dry fairly quickly as it self-levels. So get it on there and get your brush strokes straight. It's gonna play really nicely with the piece you're finishing. All right, so two coats. Definitely gonna need a third, but I can see the color coming on and it's so pretty. One of the things people are always concerned about is sanding when you have a built-in sealer. We used a random orbital sander with 220 paper and it came off just fine. It does come off fairly quickly, so be careful, but you can also go over the flat surface to smooth out any extra brush strokes or drips. Be careful not to go below 220 because you'll get squiggle marks and it could peel the paint. Just remember the shinier your piece, the softer you want to go when you distress. Once you see how it's working, then you can apply more pressure as needed. But you painted with the drawers in. You shouldn't do that. It's fine. It's so much easier than getting them knocked over in the wind. You just take your orbital sander and clean up those edges before you put them back in, good as new, and you'll get a nice even finish. We mixed aviary and farm fresh 50-50, and we're, oops, you slid. Oops. We are stenciling Wildflower 2 on the bottom of the vanity and then we'll come back and add colored flowers. Well, that turned out cute. I like it. You'll see that it's lighter and darker. That's just because some of it's dry now and some of it's still wet. Are you doing a different flower on the edge of this one? Yep. All right, I like it. It's 
we've got five, so I figure I'll use this one on this end me? here. So when you're stenciling, make sure your brush is almost dry and make sure you're using a really good stencil and stiff stencil brush. It makes all the difference, especially in this case where the surface is not super level. This would be a nightmare if you had too much paint on your brush. We're gonna distress it a little, so it'll be all right. To pick up the stencils or stencil brushes, we carry them at jamierayvintage.com. Because we use regular DIY paint to stencil, we're just using DIY's Big Top over the stencil and on top of the vanity where it's gonna get the most abuse, everything else is just fine because we have a built-in sealer. We were gonna paint the knobs, but we ended up keeping them. We really like the brown contrast with the pink tone. It turned out really good. Jamie is doing my favorite technique for getting paint off. We just use a razor blade. We don't bother taping. I found 90% of the time when I tape off, some always bleeds up under where I don't want it anyway. So we eliminate that step. We do the razor blade and then we'll come back through with some Windex and clean that all up and it looks great. I have found that 100% of the time, I don't know where any tape is. So rather than spend 20 <laughs> minutes looking for it, I just spend about five minutes cleaning it up later. And usually the mirror needs some cleanup anyway, so it's a win-win. It was really fun painting on the back porch today and doing this project and not having to haul it from one place to another to another and then back to the shop. We're super excited to have one piece out of the garage and a ton of progress made on the garden. If you want to purchase the paint and products used today, be sure to visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.